What's going on guys? Welcome to the tutorial number 22 of the series Visual Effects for Games. And today we are going to see something a little bit different. Since a lot of people requested, I'm going to talk about performance of visual effects and how you can improve them to make sure they run smooth for your game. So let's see those performance tips and tricks. So the first tip that I have for you, it's really simple and it is destroy your visual effects as soon as possible. For example, in this case I have this squares floating particle system where as you can see the particle system has a duration of 2 seconds and each particle can have a start lifetime between 1 and 5 seconds. And I have attached this script where as you can see we will destroy the particle system only after the duration of the particle system itself which in this case is only 2 seconds. Now if I press play we can see that after 2 seconds Unity destroys the particle system, even with some particles still going on. And this is bad, what we want to do is to add this line where we are going to add the maximum start life to the duration of the particle system. And now Unity only destroys the particle system after the last particles die. And that's it! It's always good to destroy your particle system, otherwise they may keep emitting particles in your game, and that's not good. Second tip, how many times your visual effect appears simultaneously is very important. This seems very easy, but for instance, as you can see this visual effect looks very simple, but when you look into the stats you can see that it has quite some triangles. In fact, it has around 2300 triangles, so for some reason, at some point in your game you are going to have 10 or 15 of these effects simultaneously, you will have a really bad time, where sometimes you will have an amount of triangles that is not necessary. And let's not talk about the badges, those ones are also really bad, but we will see that in a moment. And this leads me to the next point, which is number 3. Be careful with the amount of triangles per visual effects if you are using matches. In fact, be careful with matches, in other words with 3D models. And that's what happened with the last visual effect. I was using a sphere, which is a bit heavy, especially if you are developing for mobile. And sometimes you may think, oh, but there is no other way for me to create this effect. And I'm gonna be honest with you, sometimes it is not straightforward. See, the last effect I have done used this sprite sheet, the left one. And as you can see, this is a semi-circle. So in other words, if I don't want to use a sphere, I have to create this sprite sheet on the right where I use a circle. So instead of using the render mode to mesh with a sphere, I switched it by a billboard. And with the sprite sheet that I've created, I get pretty much the same effect as you can see. And the amount of triangles now it's really minimum. So as you can see, it's not easy to improve an effect sometimes, but it's worth taking a while and see if you can replace the mesh you are using. Tip number 4 is to reduce the amount of materials per visual effect. And here is an example, I am using between 5 and 6 different materials. And when I press play in stats, you can see that we went from 39 to around 44-45 batches. And batches basically are a group of draw calls sent to the graphic card. And a draw call is a call to the graphic card to draw an object, a triangle, etc. So basically, we want our materials to batch together. We want our materials to be only one draw call to our graphic card. And this way we will guarantee battery efficiency in case of mobile and a performance improvement of our game. So, as you can see, if I add the other 4 particle systems and leave the electric beam, we only have one more batch. And this happens because we are using several materials. Now, if I come down here and turn on this one, you will notice that we only have an increase of 2 or 3 batches. And we could only have one batch, but we are using a trail material. If I turn off the trail, we only have one batch, as you can see. So, this leads me to the next point, which is use sprite sheets or texture atlas. Because that's what I am using in this second effect. And there are a lot of softwares 
that allows you to create sprite sheets or texture atlas or you can even use Photoshop or GIMP. And the improvements are really big. This way, we only use one material for five particle systems. And this is one of the best ways to improve our visual effects. And just to show how this works, I am using the texture sheet animation. And in the tiles, I basically say that it's a texture with 2x2. Two two. And in the frame over time, we can use a constant value, which will represent each texture position. So in this case of the electric beam, the frame over time is 0. If I go to the god rays, the frame over time is 3, because that's the respective position in our sprite sheet. And by the way, there is another cool trick where you can use this asset created by Mirza. It's called Shuriken to Sprite Sheet, and basically it will convert your effects to a sprite sheet. And this is useful in case your effect has a lot of particle systems and you don't care about randomness or just because you want to export your effect to another program. And it's really easy to use, go check it out if you want, it's available in the asset store. Be careful with the size of your sprite sheet. You don't really want to get above 1496 by 1496, especially if you are developing for mobile. Because as you can see, Depending on the OpenGL version of each mobile, there are some limits that the graphic card can support. In fact, have in consideration the minimum mobile target platform you are aiming at. Number 7. The renderer settings of the particle system should be equal. Sometimes after you have created your sprite sheet and you are only using one material, sometimes you still have some extra batches. And this may happen because the renderer settings have to be mostly equal across the particle systems. For instance, like we have seen before, this particle system, the particles, they use a trail render material and this will create another batch. Another example would be to change the render mode to mesh. This will also generate another batch. So remember, if sometimes you still have an extra batch, maybe it's the renderer settings that are different. Number 8. Your visual effects are ready to batch. And for visual effects that are performance friendly, batching is one of the most important things. So in case you have some extra batches that you don't know where they are coming from, Unity has a great tool to see how everything is being rendered each frame. And it's the frame debugger, which you can find in the window, down here. Once you open it, you can press play in your scene and when that specific moment comes where you want to see what's happening under the wood, you can press enable in the frame debugger. And since we are using particles additive, we can come here to render transparent geometry where we can scroll up and down to see what is being rendered. And this is what's happening before I use the sprite sheet. Basically, each material is being rendered separately. And if you look closely, Frame Debugger tells you why this draw call can't be batched with the previous one. And as we already know, it's because it has a different material. Now, if I turn on the effect that uses the sprite sheet and enable the Frame Debugger, we can come here to the render transparent geometry and see that we have only two draw calls. And basically the second draw call is because of the trails. So this is extremely useful to see what's happening between your visual effect and the graphic card. How it's being rendered and why it's not batching. Tip number 9 has to do with automatic cooling. Some models will cancel or turn off automatic cooling. And basically if we come here to this post in Unity blog, we can see that culling is basically when a system has a predictable behavior and automatic culling is disabled when the particle system is unpredictable. A particle system can become unpredictable when we use one of these models. And these models, when enabled, they will have an unpredictable behavior. In other words, they will enter in a procedural mode and automatic culling is disabled, which means more calculations. And in Unity, we can tell if automatic culling is disabled by selecting the particle system 
and in this top right corner we can see this exclamation point which is basically saying that we have the noise model and the trails model enabled and automatic calling is off so basically if i turn the noise and the trails off this exclamation point will go away the simulation space if is set to world will also cancel automatic calling but will allow us to basically move our particle system and leave some particles behind which is cool in some cases and there are a couple of more models that disable automatic calling which you can find in lists that we have seen before so it really depends on what you want to achieve and the last tip which is not directly involved with visual effects but it's a performance tip that it's important and it basically is avoid using application frame rate equals minus one because this will use the graphic card to its maximum potential and sometimes it's not really necessary so it is recommended to allow the user to set the frame rate he wants and that's basically it guys here are 10 tips for you i hope you have enjoyed it and that you have learned something new if you want to support me you can go to patreon and you can have access to plenty of visual effects left a link in the description i want to say a big thank you to all the patrons that support me in january you guys rock you guys are awesome and if you have enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe for weekly game development tutorials and i hope to see you in the next video thank you